Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to calibrate a cinema lens. Uh, today specifically, I have a DZO Victor zoom lens. Uh, this is the 50 to 125 millimeter zoom lens. So we're going to be calibrating this guy. So what I'm going to do is basically take off the PL mat that's on here and then swap it out with an EF mount. When you are swapping out the mounts of the lens, it's important to make sure that the distance from the aperture of the lens to the sensor of your camera is the correct distance. And that's what we're gonna be calibrating today. So we have the lens, we have the EF mount, and then we have the shims. So the first thing we're gonna do is uh, take out all these screws. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight screws on here. So this is gonna be the most uh, annoying part is removing all these screws. A Little bit more, so it just comes off nicely. Oh, we got one culprit over here. All right. So it's taken off. So you can see that there's already some shims on here. So I'm just going to take these guys off for now. Ooh. So you can see this, All right? So here, this is a shim. So this is a thick shim. So this is a 0.5 and then these are all extremely thin, right? So this is 0 0.05. So, and then the little shim case here, more shims like this. So the first thing we're going to do is actually just see where we are in terms of how many more shims we need. So, I'm gonna start by, so if you see here, there's a little marking um, on top here, and you wanna align that with your shim, like so. We got a 0 0.02, 0 0.03, that's 0.5. That's 0.55. And I'm adding a 0.3. So 0.85. Okay, so now I'm going to take the PL mount and then just put it away for safekeeping. And I'm going to take my EF mount. If you're familiar with the mount, can recognize it. So I'm gonna align this notch onto the notch of the lens. And I'm gonna get my longer screws. I'm gonna feed it in there. And if you count, there's about seven screw holes in here. So this part is a little tricky too. You want to make sure the shims are not covering the holes. I'm going to screw my first one in. And I'm diagonally opposite, I'm going to screw the next one in. There we go. Okay. Perfect. So, okay. I'm gonna just stop there because we're going to be repeating this process. The next thing we're gonna do is attach this lens to an EF mount camera so that we can start to figure out if we need to add more lens or add more shims or remove more shims. So let's get into this and then I'll explain the process to you. So, here we go. 
So I have my black magic pocket cinema camera here. And I have just attached the lens, turn on this guy. And right there, we have a semen star chart. It's basically a high contrast circular pattern. You can easily find that and print it out online. I got this off of Wikipedia. Um, you can do that too. Um, so the next thing we're gonna do is take a tape measurement. DZO film recommended that I keep the uh, center of the camera about 4.9 feet away from the uh, seam and start chart. I've already pre-measured this. So right now it is approximately yeah, 4.9 feet. And for me, for the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema, the sensor is right somewhere over here, so you can approximate it. So the most important thing is you have to make sure this distance is bigger than the minimum focal distance of your lens. So for the DZO picture, the minimum is about two feet. So anything greater than two feet is fine. The next thing uh, you want to do is on your lens, you want to go to your longest focal length. So mine is 125 and I've already have it set at 125. And now I'm going to make sure my Siemens star chart is in focus. So once it's in focus, I'm going to note down that distance. So this is about 1.5. So this will be your S1 distance. And now once you got S1, you want to go to your widest focal length. For me, it is 50. And now you're going to repeat this process again. You're going to make sure that the widest part is in focus. There we go. And then you want to note that distance. So right now it's at 1.7. Let's recap this step. You want to set your camera at the longest focal length. You want to make sure the chart is in focus. And then you note the focal distance down or the focus distance down. Second, you wanna change your focal length to your widest part of your lens and make sure the chart is in focus and that'll be your second focus distance, S2. So if S2 is greater than S1, you need to remove shims. If S2 is less than S1, you need to add shims. So for us, for this example, or for me, in this example, my S2 is greater, so it means I need to remove shims. So, let's get back to removing shims. Now, I'm going to start the process of taking out these screws. And this is why you want to start with just tightening two screws, because it becomes so much more easier. So, the next thing we're going to do is actually just take off most of the shims and then just put a 0.5 on there um, and hopefully we'll get a value where S1 is bigger than S2 um, and why we're doing this is because there's no real way to exactly pinpoint how many shims you need it's more of a trial and error method and you're finding it out uh, by just repeating this process. So now I found a spot where S2 is greater than S1. And I'm gonna find a spot where S1 is greater than S2 and kind of work towards the middle to find the correct uh, amount of shims that we need. Um, and I'm also taking some notes here just so I keep track of what's going on and uh, what we're using. Also just the same. Um, so I'm going to just leave a 0.5 on this one and see how that does. Okay, so I'm going to go to my longest focal length and it's going to be in focus at 1.5, which it is. And I'm going back to my widest focal length here and I'm going to adjust it until it's in focus so that's about 1.6 so we still are getting s2 as bigger than s1 so gonna i'm 
I'm gonna have to take off more shims. Okay, now we're just 0.3 on here. Okay, so I'm going back to my longest lens here and I'm adjusting the focus and yeah, it's right at like 1.5 and now I'm going to put the widest and oh, it looks like that was it. it looks like we're in focus. Nice. Okay. You can see from the video every time I change my focal length, the object is still in focus. And that's what we need uh, with the bar focal lens is that S1 and S2 should always be the same, uh, no matter at what focal length we're at. So right now at 0.3, we're getting those results. So I have the camera now on my wife, Anna, who's also helping film me. So right now I'm at my widest lens at 50 and you can see that she's in uh, focus and I'm going in all the way up to 125 and she's still in focus. And the last thing that I wanted to do before I put in all the screws is just, as you can see, my logo here is flipped uh, upside down. And so I'm just gonna, when I put that uh, EF map back in and put all the screws in, I'm just gonna flip it so that uh, it stays right side up. It flipped the EF mount so that the lens is right side up. But I found that when I did that, it changed the calibration. So I had to recalibrate everything. So keep that in mind, depending on how you keep that EF mount, your calibration will change. I didn't notice that it changed from 0.3 to 0.7. Um, so maybe it's just easier to subtract it from one and then just flip it if you need to do that. But uh, that's a that's a theory that's not uh, proven, but it just happened to be that uh, the new value is 0.7. So keep that in mind, whichever angle you lock in your EF mount matters. Um, but it works right now. You can see that I'm focusing on my other lens, the 50, the 20 to 50 uh, DZO picture. Um, and I'm gonna go all in there and you can see the lens is still in focus and I'm going back to 50. The lens is still in focus. And this is a great thing about a parfocal lens. And this is how it functions when you calibrate it correctly. So thank you again for watching. Hope that was clear, hope that was easy. And if you have any questions, please feel free to like leave a comment uh, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, until next time, bye.